So, hello everybody, this is the TT Institute, and welcome to my book collection for 2017. Yes, I did promise to get this video out, and here it is. I even did it earlier than I expected. Are you proud of me? I hope you're proud of me. So, my book collection has grown substantially since the last time. As you can tell, the last time I hardly had any virgin books at all, hardly any target books, and not really that many BBC books either, so it's grown a lot, and um, it's on another shelf as well, which is interesting, but anyway, um, let's just get into the video, because I, just, I don't want to bore you with the details, but let's just get into this video. So, first of all, we have Nightshade, which is honestly kick it off one of my favorite Doctor Who books of all time yeah Mark Gates has written a brilliant story here like I can't really fault it in any way and there are some people that I know and they know who they are who still haven't bloody read it and they promised to read it years ago so they're definitely missing out by not reading this book they've, they've not lived until they've read this book it's such a bleak fantastic spooky story and to be honest the big finish um, adaptation did it justice as well actually now it's next we have transit which I, I couldn't finish this one like you can go either way with this story you can either adore it like absolutely love love this one love the ideas love, love how creative it is or you just don't like it you just don't find it interesting whatsoever and I guess I'm in that in that negative side of this book I I'm such I'm such I'm so sad because this is Ben Aranovich the guy who wrote Remembrance of the Daleks and I just can't enjoy this book however much I try and it really really hurts me the fact that I cannot I cannot finish this book I've tried three times already and I just can't do it yeah and then, then we have the the pit Shall we just put this back in there? Just just pretend this one never existed, to be honest. Let's just move on to a brilliant book. I love this one. It is a brilliant story, actually. It's very, very good. I think Jim Mortimer really did deliver. Oh, and Andy Lane as well. I forgot that he co-wrote it with Jim Mortimer. White Darkness, which is another very, very good one. Very, very bleak. Has zombies, voodoo, all this other creepy crap that goes on. I'm a big fan. I'm a really big fan of this one. Really, really interesting book. I, I, really enjoyable that one. If you if you're into the darker side of Doctor Who, the real like gritty, dark, like gothic, like terrifying side of Doctor Who, this is the book to go for. Very, very good one that one. Birthright. I uh, haven't read it, but I think it's the smallest Virgin book actually of. Doctor Who, I think. I'm not sure though. Iceberg, haven't read it, but I'm surprised because I probably should have read it by now because it's got the Cybermen, as you can see, and well, I love the Cybermen, at least I did anyway. But yeah, I need to read this one because it does intrigue me. But what I've heard is that um, is that older fans enjoy this book a lot more than younger ones. Blood Harvest, uh, absolutely fantastic masterpiece of a book, almost as good as Nightshade. Nightshade is just better because it's Nightshade. But Blood Harvest is a fantastic book, probably my second favourite virgin book, either that or Lucifer Rising. But Blood Harvest is a brilliant book, absolutely fantastic that one. I love it to pieces, so good. Now we have Goth Opera, which I need to read because it is a sequel to Blood Harvest. This is into the missing adventures now with the... That was the Seventh Doctor, New Adventures, but this is the missing adventures. But Goth Opera is... Yeah, it's it's linked to Blood Harvest, and I need to read this one right now because the Blood Harvest is fantastic, and if Goth Opera is anywhere near as good as Blood Harvest is, then it's going to be an enjoyable read, definitely. State of Change, I haven't read it, but yes, it reminds me a bit of Vengeance on Varos because of the way Perry looks on the cover, but anyway. 
Uh, Time of Your Life by Steve Lyons. I haven't read this one either, but it was one of my earliest missing adventures, but I haven't really read it. I'm surprised, but Steve Lyons usually delivers on his novels, so I should enjoy this one whenever I get to it. A very, very battered System Shock. I might get another one, but I'm not in a rush because I couldn't really finish this book. It wasn't really doing it for me. I don't know why. Maybe it was just maybe it was just that one instance. Maybe I need to give it another go, but I don't know. I just wasn't feeling it. Uh, the Menagerie. Um, I haven't read it, but I need to. There's a lot of missing adventures I need to read in my collection. But anyway, then Dancing the Code. I don't know. I've known this one to be quite popular, but for me, it just didn't do it. It just didn't live up to the expectations, I guess. I'm, I don't know. But here's an absolutely fantastic book, The Empire of Glass, which is actually signed by Peter Purvis. Um, I met him at um, Bedford's charity convention in April. Absolutely fantastic novel this one is. Absolutely brilliant. I love this one to pieces. Speaking of brilliant books, we have The Murder Game, which I've now read twice because I'm so addicted to this book. And it's so good. It's like... <sighs> If you love murder mysteries, you'll love this book. If you love Base Under Siege, you'll also love this book. And if you love the alien like aspect, like the the alien like it's just such a good book. You need to read this one. If you love Doctor Who, if you love Doctor Who, if you really love it, you need to give this one a try. Alright? Just just give it a try. The murder game is a brilliant novel. The Ultimate Treasure, haven't read it. The Indestructible Man, the rarest BBC book, and I have it. The Eater of Wasps. Now, okay, so like, I got recommended this one by by a good friend of mine, and I, okay, so it's not terrible, and this does get a lot of hate, this book, but I don't, I don't know, I mean, the first half is definitely boring, but the second half does pick up pace, but I just don't know what it is about this book, I just... It's not amazing, but it's not terrible. I don't know how to really get get this point across. It's just it's it's good. It's all right. It's good, but it's not anything good. It's not every. It's not anything amazing. Is what I'm trying to say. Um, City of the Dead, which is a brilliant one, actually. Really like that one. A Sleep of Reason, which has a very very cool cover. Look at that. So creepy. Look at that wolf. There. So cool. That one. And then this is a very, very recent edition, uh, the Gallifrey Chronicles, which I got at the Doctor Who Experience. There's actually a vlog on that if you want to, um, if you want to, you know, um, go watch that, then be my guest. Uh, the Clockwise Man, which is alright. It's it's good. It's all, it's not a bad one, but it's nothing amazing. It's It's like... There are some things in this in this book that not don't make sense. It's just don't really have too much of a purpose being there, if you know what I mean. Then we have the monsters inside, which is good. It's all right. It's better than Clockwise Man, but it's not amazing in any shape of the imagination. So then we have When It Takes All, an absolutely fantastic book. I really enjoyed reading this one fantastic one you have to read this one if there's any new series book that you need to read it's definitely when it takes all very very, very good so in strain um yeah it's good it's all right so, i don't know um only human very overrated uh, and we have the scene as a dream so now we have um the tenth doctor stuff we have um stone rose which an absolute overrated piece of crap. Honestly, just such a bland. It's so cr oh, so crap. Oh my! Just go away, you stupid book. Feast of the Drowned. Uh, very very good. Breath of Breath of Fresh Air from that bloody atrocious mess. But uh, Feast of the Drowned. Yeah, it's quite good actually. Quite atmospheric. I quite like it. Resurrection Casket. Um, you just the only way you can really enjoy this one is if you don't really take it too seriously and then you can get through it in one go well not in one go but you can actually get through the book at all um 
Nightmare Black Island, a very, very good book in my opinion. I love this one. It's a very, very good one. Answer Destruction, Price of Paradise, and we have this one. No, like this book. Fuck off! I hate that book so much. So bad. The Last Dodo. Wooden Heart. Forever Autumn. Now this one. Okay, so it has good atmosphere. I have to give it credit for that. It does have very, very good atmosphere. It's just, just the characterization in this book is just a bit off. Like with with Martha, and I don't really like the story is a bit bland as well. But yeah, it's it's all right. Wet World, which is actually alright to be honest, and then Wishing Well, which is quite good. I've enjoyed it more on previous, uh, you know, times, but it's still alright. It's not bad, it's just I can definitely spot the flaws a lot easier now rather than before, you know, just it, it's okay, but nothing amazing. So on the second row, we have Pirate Loop, which is very, very similar to the Resurrection Casket in some respects because. Well, it's got pirate ships, doesn't it? But I mean, you you can't really take this one seriously, either, otherwise you'll just hate it. I think I think it's one of those books. Luckily, I I was in a weird mood when reading this one, so I found it all right. But that's because I was like, oh, what the fuck is this book? I don't care. So it, it was it was that's that's how I felt about it. It was all right, but you can't really take it seriously, otherwise it'll piss you off. The Peacemaker, <laughs> yeah. Um, Enjoyed it from a young age, this one, but rereading this book now, I don't see the appeal, to be honest. I don't really like this one anymore, which is a shame because I really have fond memories of, you know, the cowboys and all that, that sci fi twist that goes on in it. I just don't enjoy it anymore, which is a shame. Martha in the Mirror, yeah. It's okay, I guess. Many Hands, which is. Quite atmospheric, actually. I quite like it. The story of Martha, which is okay. I didn't really finish this one. I got a bit bored halfway through, but it's not a terrible book. It's just like I got bored, I guess. Beautiful Chaos, Shining Darkness, which is so crap to be honest. I, I so boring. I, I oh, just no. And then we have this piece. This absolutely. Oh, this absolute mess I oh, just no just why does this book exist I don't get it so bad then we have a uh, prison of the Daleks which is very good actually I really really like this one this one actually very very good one I really enjoyable almost as good as winner takes all in my opinion really really good then we have uh, Apollo 23 which is such a bonkers ridiculous just mad this stupid book, it's just so silly, it's just not even like, it's not even good silly, it's just bad, just no. Uh, Night of the Humans, it's pretty crap to be honest. Nuclear Time, yeah, it's, it's okay, it's alright. Then we have Touched by an Angel, Paradox Lost, which is so bad, and then Borrowed Time, which isn't too bad, it's alright. Doctor and the Daleks, which is okay. I, I don't like how it's how it's written. It's written from the viewpoint of Ian, and it's okay, but it's nothing amazing. And oh better take this out because um need more space for my books to breathe as it were. Then we have Doctor and the Keys of Marinus, Doctor and the Aztecs, Doctor and the Zabi. Gunfighters, Doctor Who and the Tenth Planet, Doctor Who and the Power of the Daleks, Doctor Who and the Cybermen, which I love this one. I haven't been able to read Power of the Daleks, but I've read this one and it's so good. Love that book. Evil of the Daleks, Doctor Who and the Enemy of the World, The Crotons, Doctor Who and the War Games, which I haven't read, but I know that a lot of you guys probably know this, but this book is only 141 pages long, and considering this episode is 10 parts, it makes me worried to 
how much they skipped in this book. I hope it didn't ruin the story. Doctor and the Orthon Invasion, which is a good story actually, and well written as a book, I think. Very, very well written. Doctor and the Cave Monsters. I enjoy the book more than uh, the TV story, actually. This book is quite enjoyable, this one, because it does cut down on some of the tediousness that the TV story does have. Apologies if you're a fan of that uh, story, no offence. And we have Inferno, Doctor Who and the Doomsday Weapon, Doctor Who and the Daemons, Doctor Who and the Day of the Daleks, Doctor Who and the Time Warrior, Death to the Daleks, the Monster of Peladon. I really thought that when I'd watched this, this, this episode, I'd absolutely despise it, but I kind of prefer Monster of Peladon to Curse of Peladon. I'm, I'm very, very surprised. I'm just as surprised as you are. But when I watched it, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot more than Curse, at any rate. It's not amazing, but I need to read this one. But the TV story, I enjoy more than Curse of Peladon, which is very, very surprising, actually. Doctor and the Giant Robot. Doctor and the Sontaran Experiment. Doctor and the Genesis of the Daleks. Revenge of the Cybermen. Doctor Who and the Loch Ness Monster. Doctor and the Brain of Morbius. Doctor and the Mask of Mandragora. Doctor and the Deadly Assassin. Doctor and the Robots of Death. Doctor and the Towns of Wang Chiang. Doctor and the Horror of Fang Rock. Doctor Who and the Invisible Enemy. Doctor Who and the Image of the Fendel. Um, I prefer the book to the TV story. The TV story I find, I don't know, something about it I just didn't enjoy. But the book I quite enjoy actually. I probably need to revisit this TV story to be honest. Um, Doctor and the Power of Kroll. Doctor Who and the Armageddon Factor. Doctor Who and the Creature from the Pit. The Leisure Hive. Megalos. Doctor Who and the Keeper of Traken. Earthshock, which is a brilliant story, book form, and TV version. I adore this one. Very, very good story. Time Flight, which is <laughs> so bad. Um, Doctor and the Five Doctors. Warriors of the Deep. Frontios. Vengeance on Varos. Time Lash. Remember it to the Daleks. I've read this novelization seven times. I can't stop reading this this book. It's so enjoyable. Silver Nemesis, an underrated story in my opinion. I quite like it. And then we have a fantastic book, a fantastic story as well, called Survival. Let's move on to the other miscellaneous books that I have. So down here we have a couple little miscellaneous books and we'll just go through them. So we have Magic of the Angels, which is a quick read. Uh, then we have Judgment of the Jadoon. Oh, it's Revenge of the Jadoon, my apologies. Lol. Then we have uh, Made of Steel, which is alright actually, it's not too bad. Then we have I'm a Dalek, which is okay. Then we have some uh, non-fiction books. We have The Doctor's Who's Who. And um, there's an updated version with Peter Capaldi and John Hurt in it, and I probably need to get it. But this book is very interesting because it goes through the Doctor's, like, the actor who's played the Doctor, all of their, how they became the role, and I find that very interesting. And this book is very good, actually. I really like it. Then we have something which I haven't actually read and I don't really plan to read anytime soon. We have Wit, Wisdom, and Timey Wimey Stuff, the quotable Doctor Who book. Um... Not really interested in this, to be honest. It, I don't know. I might read it eventually when I'm bored, but I don't know about it. Here's a really, really good non-fiction book. We have Whoology. A very, very good one. I really, really like this one. It's very interesting, full of interesting facts about, you know, everything, to be honest. Very, very good book. Almost like a, a Bible of Doctor Who. Then we have, oh, a little lonely target book here. It's the crossword book, which... I've never used and I probably won't ever use it. We have um, 
a lonely script book down here, um, Power of the Daleks, which I have read like six times, and, and this story is amazing, brilliant. Then we have this lonely um, W. H. Allen hardback. We have the Auton Invasion, which is very, very abused, beaten up, and battered, which is very, very sad. Poor book, what a shame. But yeah, um, yeah, there's that. And then we have a, a a BBC reprint of the Frederick Mullers. We have Doctor and the Crusaders, which is all right. I couldn't really get to the end. I tried. Look, I even have my bookmark still in there as well. See, I couldn't get through it. Um, this weird abstract looking paperback, uh, Doctor and the Crusaders, which I don't know what range it belongs in, I don't know anything about this book. And speaking of which, we have another book which is very, very similar. We have Doctor Who in an exciting adventure with the Daleks. Yeah, I don't know um, where this one belongs. But both of these both of these books, they came in the uh, bundle with my Frederick Muller original and uh, was, and it's off the shelf now to show you guys it is yeah, the Doctor and Exciting Adventure with the Daleks, the original. Uh, you see that? Frederick Muller, Muller on the spine. Really, really proud of that. And it's like my pride and joy of all these, of my book collection. It's brilliant. And I probably won't ever read this because I don't want to fret about damaging it. But I'm really, really happy to have it. And it came in the bundle with the other two paperbacks that I just showed you. So, yeah, there you go. Um, there are the books on my shelf. Let's just go through uh, the magazines. I guess. So moving on with the uh, the magazines, we have um, this one, which I probably it's definitely my first one. Well, it's not my first one; it was given to me, and it is 425, I think that says. So yeah, there's that one. There's also this one. I won't really tell you. This one is good. It, it's the 50th anniversary one, talking about the rankings of all the Doc Two stories within the first 50 years. I always go back to that one in case I want to refresh my memory on how popular an episode is. We have this one. We have the the five the fifth hundredth uh, magazine, which I've read probably about twenty times. There's so much good stuff in there to to read about, which is cool. We have this one, which I'm actually really really fascinated with because it has all the covers for all of the um, top two magazines that have ever been, which is really cool I like that a lot very very good, interesting book that one is I really really like that one then we have this one another favorite of mine of the magazines um, with a brilliant interview from Tom Baker and I really love that interview I sometimes come back to it sometimes but yeah good one we have this one this one uh, we have this one which I have read a couple times it tells me about the Cybermen which is very interesting actually this one talks about how Torchwood might be coming back, which is cool. About its 50, about how about its 10th anniversary? Sorry. Then we have this one. We have this one, which I haven't actually read at all, to be honest. We have the yearbook, which the 2017 yearbook, obviously. We have this one, which I like to come back and read to because it's the 1970s, and the 1970s is fantastic. We have that one. Then we have this one, and then we have the Doctor Experience Official Guide, which isn't technically a Doctor Who magazine, but I call, I put it in this category, because why not? So yeah, there are the magazines. Let's go on to the annuals. So moving on to the annuals, first of all, I'm just going to show you this. This is the cookbook, which technically isn't a manual, but I didn't know I didn't know where else to put it. So we have uh, this one, which I think is the 19... 1981 annual I think yeah we have the 2006 annual 2007 2008 2009 then we have the encyclopedia we have 2010 2011 we have the brilliant book 2011 we have the official annual for 2012 the brilliant book of 2012 then we have annual 2016 and then 2017 so yeah. Then we have three complete history books, which I did actually plan to continue collecting these books, but, well, I mean, they are very, very pricey, and I did have other things on my mind at the time, so I never really got around to collecting them. I might just pick up the ones that interest me, like Genesis of the Daleks one, or, I don't know, the Moon Base. But anyway, we have this one, which I read a lot, because it's got a town called Mercy in it. Then we have this one, which... Another good one, and then we have 
This one, I only really read it for... Actually, no, all of these stories are very good, to be honest. I'd read this one a lot. I'd like to. So, yeah, there are those. So, yeah, now we have the last little batch of books that I'm showing you. Um, and these are... I have three Decide Your Destiny books. We have Coldest War, Claws of the Macro... Oh, no, it's only two. And this is a quiz book, rather. Quiz book three. And we have... The Daleks, which is a fact file book, which I never really got the others. It would be nice to get the others, but they are becoming collector's pieces and they're becoming increasingly rare to get hold of, which is a shame. Then we have Starships and Space Stations, and then we have Where's the Doctor, which is basically a Where's Wally ripoff, but whatever. So, yeah, there's all of my books. So, yeah. Why are you there? So there was my collection for 2017, there you go, my book collection. Hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time, goodbye.